calendar. Maybe invite a friend or two to listen with you. That's Sunday, March 28th from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. right here at KPFA 94.1 FM. For more info, go to kpfa.org or call 510-848-6767, extension 614. Good afternoon. This is KPFA or KPFB Berkeley or KFCF in Fresno. Online or at kpfa.org. Up next, a pre-recorded and archived show of About Health. This is a pre-recorded show. Good afternoon and welcome to About Health. I'm your host today, Rachel Bryant. Thank you for listening. And on the show today, we have Brother Reverend Phil Valentine, Dr. Phil Valentine, returning uh, to uh, About Health. So welcome to the show. Thank you. He is an eminent metaphysician, scholar, teacher, and polymath, and I like to say a self-defined free thinker because I think all of these are just titles. And we'll be talking about the hygienic approach to natural healing today. So did I cover all of the all of the things that you do, Dr. Valentine? Uh, not quite. Not nearly, I know. But uh, still embarrassingly enough. <laughs> okay. He is also the author of The Wounded Womb, and that's what our last conversation was about. The Wounded Womb, The Suppressed Truths Behind the Anatomy, Metaphysics, Politics, and Economics of Women's Diseases. And we may talk about the book a little bit later in the show, but let's begin by uh, just sharing some of your background and how you came to do all of the work that you do. Oh, I think I might have been thrust into it from a very early age. Uh, back in my youth while in Trinidad, um, I had um, sustained vaccination uh, reactions that uh, nearly took my life. Uh, and also, it in that in that little test or trial during my childhood, it, it scarred me with a specific ailment that carried over when I came stateside. And uh, because of the many attacks based on that particular ailment, I decided to, to no more doctor's visits, no more drugs. And uh, what happened, I began searching. And uh, my search took me to different areas outside of the purview of Western medicine. And uh, before I knew it, I had uh, thrust myself headfirst into finding a solution, a natural solution. And uh, during those many years, I read literally thousands of books. Uh, I bless my mother and my father for allowing me the time. I didn't do any work. I pretty much just sequestered myself in the basement of the house and just became almost a hermit, a monk, just reading, researching, and trying different things on myself. And, uh, of course, uh, I came upon, uh, you know, many uh, sages of the health uh, field, uh, including uh, Brother Dick Gregory and um, many others back in that time, Victor Skavinskas and his book, 21st Century, uh, and uh, many others uh, that began putting me on a path as far as natural healing is concerned. And uh, once I had found I could uh, actually put my body back into balance naturally, I naturally began to, uh, to pursue a, uh, I wouldn't want to say career, but to pursue a quest or at least a path uh, in uh, trying to help people to achieve the same goals that I did. Yes, and there are plenty of people I know that you've helped back in what you may refer to as the early days in mm -hmm. New York. Uh, tell us a little bit about the beginnings of when you came out of the basement and began to work with uh, folks in New York. I think oh, that was yeah, in the that, 80s. Uh, yeah, it was interesting because uh, during those times uh, that uh, I had the chance to do the kind of uh, research and analysis and self-testing on myself and so forth, during those times I had um, gotten a chance to be with 
or I was sitting on the stoops of the, of the house and from early morning, say around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the mornings, of course not in the winter time, but in spring, summer, and early fall, I would be on the stoop. <clears throat> when I was actually doing the work of studying, people would be passing by going to work very early in the mornings, and they'd be telling me all about their problems, and I would give suggestions, and they'd come back and tell me, hey, that was great, now my friend uh, had this problem, and before I knew it, I was giving advice on that street. And uh, I said, you know, this this could work. So I followed through. But at the time, and that was about 30-something, 30 35 years ago, I didn't know what schools to go to. So I began uh, pursuing uh, that quest on my own. So I opened up or at least joined a uh, known person at that time uh, who became known as Queen of Four. At the time, she was Helen Turin. And um, we put together... Uh, programs, 21 day uh, juice feasting program and all the different things that kind of helped the grassroots and uh, nature healing community uh, and people to come on to the, the self-healing consciousness that was rising about that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think a lot of what we see today was really born out of that time uh, with some of the sages that you mentioned and, and the work that you were doing there. Yes. So today... I'd like to talk about the hygienic approach to natural healing or hygienic science. Can you just give us an overview of what that is, please? Well, to me, after having explored all the different avenues of naturopathic healing, uh, I, I came upon a, uh, a system uh, that was uh, essentially resurrected because a lot of people uh, take it back to Thrall and um, uh, other members like Sheldon and so forth. But this system essentially existed way back in the time of Kemet uh, and uh, even earlier. And it's a science, a true science. I call it the true science because we do not deal when we deal as hygienic scientists, we do not deal with a system called poisonopathy. We call it poisonopathy. And that is a system of poisoning people back to health. And if you were to investigate all the different systems of healing that are presently uh, out there, you would see that they use uh, different machinations, man-made machinations, to try to coax, uh, cajole, uh, or instigate health, or instigate remedial uh, health uh, in ways to, in other words, uh, the quest is symptom suppression in some way or shape or form. Now, it isn't that we do not do that. We do that only in very uh, chronic conditions and systems of chronic pain and so forth. But we do not, we do not promote, we do not uh, uh, try to um, uplift or sell uh, anyone on medications, and we do consider herbs to be medications as well. Mm -hmm. So after studying herbology and now coming to understand what the system of herbology actually is once you take away all of the folklore and the myths and all of what even our ancestors used it for, uh, you come to find out once you've studied the human body at the elemental level, at the molecular level, at the atomic level, that the body is the healing instrument. No uh, agency or agent, for that matter, or quote-unquote healer, for that matter, instigates healing. Uh, all healing, all dis-ease is actually instigated by the body itself. And once you understand that principle, once you understand that the cellular intelligence is the healing, uh, then you begin to uh, know how to surrender to that fact or you know how to at least assist in that process. I have to just let that sink in just a moment, everyone. Um, and so I know as part of the research that you do uh, is also not only looking at the science of the body and of the mind, um, but also looking at the things that sort of shape our mindset to believe that we have all of these diseases going on in our body. One of the things that you do is you decode the media, and we've had conversations about this before. So talk a little bit about that how um the media and um i think you call it the socio-political 
uh, machine or the pharmaceutical cartels um, are so pervasive in our mindset to want the magic pill, pill and not to acknowledge our body's own intelligence. For well, that, that goes without saying. You can turn on the television at any channel at any time of the day and see what I call the legal pushes uh, electronically applying their trade uh, to seduce you into getting the doctor <clears throat> to become, you know, your own private pusher. But it, it, <clears throat> what has happened is that we live in a belief-structured society. Uh, this society has not been given uh, to uh, like to research, self-research. So in school, we are programmed, especially now, uh, to look for authority figures uh, as the medium towards uh, the understanding or knowledge of anything. Now, it's not to say that authority figures are not uh, correct and righteous in their own right, but they're not when it comes to a commercial-based product-pushing entity such as the pharmaceutical cartel. First and foremost, the medical uh, science, medical science as we know it versus hygienic science, medical science is a belief structure. It's not a science. That's an oxymoron, putting those two words together in our in our uh, understanding. And of course, with their investigation, the more they investigate and the more they find out, the closer they come to understanding what true science, true healing science is. Uh, we call it, we call the medical, uh, medical science, we call it a medical church because it's a belief structure. And they teach the general population that health is so and so and disease is so and so. But in their schools, once you follow their acolytes, when they go into that church, they are, they are actually regimented into that religious structure uh, by studying death. And I want that to sink into the family as well. Understand that medical science, at, when you go into school for medical science, you don't study life. You study death. Your chief uh, area of, of research is a cadaver. So they teach you all the different working parts, but it's dead. You're looking at these uh, remnants. And what life is, they don't teach because they do not allow for uh, any precursor to a body walking around. It, it, it functions only on chemical exchanges and some kind of, uh, I guess, quantum bioelectricity that cannot be explained because in none of those books do you see the mention of creator, God, universal intelligence, or anything beyond what the body can show to you. So we believe that this ease actually comes because we are taught from viruses, germs, and bacteria, uh, fungus, and all these little agents that we know in hygienic science to be incidental to the disease. It's like <clears throat> medical science telling you that when you see virus or when you see bacteria or when you see fungus, they would look at a pile of garbage and a pile of garbage surrounded by thousands of flies and based on the theories of medical science, they would tell you that the flies brought the garbage. Mm -hmm. Whereas we here in, in hygienic science would tell you that if you put garbage into your system, then the body's incidental intelligent reaction to that would be flies, which would be in their terminologies bacteria. So we reverse the field and tell you that there is no such thing as a bacteria causing your disease or a virus causing anything. That way they have an industry now that's built up on the fact that since we have told you and now you believe that uh, disease is caused by bacteria or virus, we have an arsenal of ballistics that we can sell to you to the tune of $1 trillion a year to get you to help us to fight in this war against disease, when in fact disease is actually an agency of the body's own intelligence and that the bacteria essentially is there as helpmates to the process of healing. And therefore, bacteria cannot cause anything because they are not causal principles, they are effectual principles. And in hygienic science, once you learn that your body is an intelligence that responds to certain inimical conditions, 
then you begin to understand that you pre um, your own health by the way you act, the way you think, the way you eat, um, the way you uh, communicate with others. All of these constitute health. Mm -hmm. Speak some more about that because you've definitely explained what what the root of disease is not. So then where does it come from when we have this belief like I caught the flu or, uh, you know, even some chronic condition like heart disease or something like that? Well, you just said it, but just go into hypnotic, more detail, please. Yeah, it is a mass hypnotic thing where um, I see the people talk about the flu season. That's a good one. Well, everybody's been eating a certain way or have been exposed to certain types of uh, disease-making behavior, then, of course, there would be this mass uh, kind of uh, disease structuring or at least the uh, appearances of what everybody is supposedly getting as disease. But, again, we're being helped in that because most people who take vaccinations, for example, especially the flu vaccinations, predispose themselves to flu, even though they do not get the symptoms. Now, let me just explain that. Vaccinations don't protect you against the flu. That's another one of those medical superstitions that we buy into. Again, it's all about faith. It's a church-like organization pushing a kind of faith. Vaccinations actually cripple your own ability to respond at a higher level. Therefore, it isn't that you are not being affected by whatever it is that you do to yourself. It is that you are no longer at the level of health so that you can respond naturally and correctly to that inimical source. So vaccination cripples you so that you don't feel the symptom. But then later on, since the body is reacting to whatever it is that's inside there that needs to come out, you now crippling its ability to do that, the body has to find other ways. Then it has to search or it then changes its mind, quote unquote, and uses other organs in order to get the filth or the problem out of the body as it was trying to do. So now you end up with different types of things like high blood pressure or liver disease, kidney diseases, thinking all the while that these flu shots and vaccinations actually suppressed and helped you to not get certain diseases. But in fact, and here is the secret, the secret behind uh, Western medicine and all the drugs that they give you and all of the, the uh, temporary uh, processes of healing they give you is that when you get a drug, whenever you take a drug or a pill and you suppress a symptom, you are actually creating a secondary disease in the body. The secondary disease forces the body to change its attention to the primary disease. Therefore, the symptom of the primary disease goes you believe the pill took away your problem, but actually the pill started a secondary problem that has not yet reached to the surface to show you that there was a problem. <laughs> I'm hoping the family got that one. I think so. <laughs> I like to think our listeners are intelligent and we'll speak to your highest intelligence always. <laughs> so in hygienic science, then, it's keeping a purified body but in this day and age, it's like the air is polluted, the food has stuff in it. I mean, it seems like there's nowhere to go. And so how does one function in a world where uh, the things that we must take in our body to survive and do what we need to do are impure? And maybe that's all that's given. Not everyone has access to organic food or maybe even vegetables or, you know, and, and thinking even beyond this culture, just globally. Uh, how do you take what's given and and maintain a hygienic environment in your body. And that's the problem, and you hit it right there. Uh, not all of the the uh, not all of the the uh, what we call the catechisms of hygiene uh, can be followed today, and that's the pro that's, that's the the pity and the, the sad part of it. Uh, we try to maintain the better part, of at least eighty five percent of the hygienic system of health and healing, but it's extremely difficult to try to convince others of that because uh, what is necessary for the hygienic system to work 
those who are the powers that be who tamper with our food, our air, our water, our lands that we grow our food in, they make that more difficult. So if those who follow the hygienic system always seems to have an ache, a pain, a cold, because since our so-called immune system is so sharp, we are consistently under the gun based upon the polluted environment that we're in. So a lot of them say, well, I don't know about this hygienic system. I might as well just opt out and take these kinds of foods and drugs to inebriate myself, to numb myself so I don't constantly feel a symptom because of the fact that I'm getting so healed, I'm feeling so well, but I'm so susceptible to the poisons that I tend to react faster. Where if I was quote unquote vaccinated, uh, in one way, shape, or form, if I was taking certain foods that, or drugs would, or herbs that would suppress, I could go along functioning with my life. And I need to get to my nine to five. I need to keep doing work to pay bills and so forth. So we empathize with that. But we don't want to diminish. We don't want to uh, completely put to the wayside to abandon the hygienic process because the greater majority of our society are being attacked and we say that that is we say that with uh, no compunction uh to uh to hold our tongue we are under an attack and because we are it is uh it is uh, adamant that we must be adamant to try to uphold the principles of hygienic science no matter what mm-hmm. so uh we tell the people You know, it's about walking a thin line. We teach them what it is to bring themselves back to health when they've gone too far to the right or to the left. But we let them know that the hygienic principle does not deal with poisonopathy. And as such, you will be susceptible to more poisons. Mm Mm-hmm. You are listening to About Health. This is Rachel Bryant, and our guest today is Brother Phil Valentine, who is a metaphysician and scholar, a teacher, author of The Wounded Womb, and many other things, a hygienic scientist, and as he said... um, the list goes on, but really he's a person that cares about people and cares about uh, keeping this science pure and sharing it with us, as he said. I'm going to go ahead and open the phone lines now. If you have comments or questions for Brother Valentine, please call us now in the East Bay at 848-4425. Again, that's 8. This is a pre-recorded show. Please do not call. This is a pre-recorded show. Thank you. Nine five eight nine zero zero eight. I want to go back to something we started talking about. Uh, when you say we're under attack, I think one of the ways that we're under attack is certainly in the media, and we see a lot of advertisements for um, diseases such as depression or or yeah diseases such as depression, AIDS, heart disease. So I'd like to just look at some of those in a little more detail. And and if you know of some of the advertisement and some of the subliminal messages that are going into our subconscious minds about these things, we can talk about that some more. So let's just start with depression, because it seems like in all of the magazines and if you watch TV, you're constantly bombarded with uh, medication for depression. Well, this this society is an overstimulated society. First and foremost, uh, we are either overstimulated with caffeine, with sugar, and, and other forms of pseudo cocaine products. Uh, we also take pills for pretty much everything. Uh, vitamins are a stimulant; they don't help. They don't give you nutrition. So our bodies are in overstimulation. We have to stay up nights. In fact, our whole circadian rhythm is off. The body, the human body, was not meant to function under this unnatural environment. So people who foster this unnatural environment and make money from it stand to make millions, in fact billions, from the disorders that the human body uh, shows while it is adjusting to unnatural environments. So when you have people overworked with no sleep or with very little sleep, uh, when you have people overstimulated uh, with um, not only caffeine but alcohol, cigarettes, uh, when you have them overstimulated with sugar, which has been pretty much everything, um, when you have them in a high-anxiety environment, 
uh, such as uh, the ones that we are living in right now with the type of stress because of our economic conditions. All of this tends to have an overactive uh, uh, effect on especially the spleen. Uh, depression in the energy of the spleen area, as well as the liver and the heart, depression in the spleen is what really causes depression. The suppression of energies or the overactivity of the spleen causes uh, a suppression, and that comes from a lack of sleep and uh, attention, too much attention, and especially not sleeping in the dark so that the uh, pineal gland has a chance to uh, recharge itself. Uh, so depression is so essentially is living in an unnatural environment, living under unnatural light, destruction of the circadian rhythm, the natural circadian rhythm, and the overstimulation based upon the foods that we eat and the beverages that we're taking in order to keep up with this unnatural environment. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was listening to you, I, I thought about how what you said a little earlier, how when we take pills, uh, it creates a secondary condition that just hasn't come to the surface yet. And it's it's really hilarious that the drug companies tell you that if you've ever looked at one of these ads, so you may feel better for the primary symptoms, say depression, but it's going to cause this whole other chain reaction. And, I mean, that list is amazing to me. Um, it's called side effects, but we in the um, hygienic community call it poisonous effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Plain and simple. Well, we've got some callers. I'll give the number out once again, and then we'll start taking your phone calls. In the East Bay, 848 4425 Outside the area, 1-800-958-9008. Please give us a call if you have questions or comments for Phil Valentine. And let's go ahead to Yvette in San Francisco. Yvette, welcome to About Health. Welcome. Hi. I just wanted to comment. Um, right now, I was diagnosed with um, uh, womb cancer. <laughs> it's amazing that's your name of your book. But um, they wanted to stay didn't find a tumor, they just found the thickening of the lining and also they had found some cancer cells and they wanted to, to operate me to take out the womb, not just the womb, the, fallop the fallopian tubes, the ovaries and I'm just feeling bad, I don't really want to do it, I want to wait and I've been taking herbs and the herbs have really helped and I'm just interested that the speaker uh, says that even herbs are poisoning to your system, actually the herbs is what's been saving my life because I have this electrical feeling in my skin and now I can't even be out in the sun it's in I can feel the virus or whatever it is on, on, on my glands so what does the speaker have to say to that good question well, uh, what is the name of the herb you're using I'm, I'm using a bunch of herbs that are the um, Chinese herbs and I'm also using whatever herbs that I anytime I read about anything I just add it to my list I have a whole bunch of them but um, I, 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 I think I have the actual um, I think I have a part of the picture what I can tell you beloved is that the skin sensitivity is based upon the reaction that the herbs are having on your uh, kidney, your, actually your large intestines, your lungs, and your skin are connected. So uh, when the body has too much toxicity in the system, especially not only with the toxicity that led to what they came up with as far as the diagnosis of cancer, uh, which essentially is a degenerative disease, which actually comes after a long period of, um, of uh, and I would say, in, uh, infrastructural abuse. Mm-hmm. And what we're looking at, essentially, is this skin sensitivity that you're having is, is actually what the herbs are doing to your the perineum, uh, the, the, the pleurum, as well as the large intestines, because they're all connected. So what it is, the sensitivity is the fact that your body now is trying to throw off the toxic agents within the uh, the herbs. Plus. Actually, I, I don't think that the herbs cause the skin sensitivity because I've been having skin rashes before I was using these herbs. The herbs actually uh, relax the electricity in, in my skin, so I find the herbs to really, really help me. Well, the relaxation of the electricity is a relaxation of the cleansing process. If you were having um, a a problems with the skin and skin sensitivity early with rashes, it meant, means that you have lung problems. Really? 
I it's haven't been told that at all. That's one of the, the only places that I don't have a problem, but okay. Right. Well, well, that's what they're telling you. Your body is all working through the lungs, and the lungs are working as the skin. Look at your skin as a breathing organ. Mm -hmm. And that's what they tell you. The largest breathing organ that you have is your skin. Well, if you're dealing with the law of similars, what is similar to the breathing organ of the skin is the breathing organ called the lungs. They are connected. So if you're any, any part that, that may not, since your lungs are now doing the work of trying to help the skin to throw off the waste, then that means that you, you're, do you smoke? No, I don't smoke. But, then, you know, the, the problems that I have were, uh, it's just, I, I feel the infection in my blood and in my lymph nodes. And I'm just saying, if I don't do these herbs, what would I do? I, I submit myself ah. to these uh, Western medicines where they just want to cut things out and then give me chemo no, 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 and radiation. No, no. no beloved. I so would, what's the alternative? I would even place you into that category. What I would do is tell you that the swelling of the lymph nodes, uh, the the place that they say they have cancer cells, again, this is based on degenerative habits. Once you shift your habits, the body works by you putting in the proper materials that would convert to the proper gases because your body is a gas, uh, a gas engine. Okay. It does not, it does, the cells don't eat, they don't have a diet. You can't give the cells anything that the cells will eat. The cells work on gas. The, great, the, the, the predominant gas that you use is oxygen, mm -hmm. or oxygen in the body, less waste matter that is impacted in the body, the better the engine will work. So what you need is a purification process, okay. a more radical one, granted, but a purification process nonetheless, and you can reverse all of what it is that showed up in their diagnosis in about a year's time or less. Okay, well, what kind of purification would I Okay, do? you know, I think, Yvette, that it's a good time for um, Dr. Valentine to give out his contact information uh, because it sounds like this could get very detailed and it's not a cookie-cutter approach. Every person, although generally what he's saying, it sounds like you may have more in-depth questions. So let's give out your contact information if people want more information and to go in-depth with you and okay, talk about those services out. a little bit. Sure, you can call our university and the uh, helpline at 386-456-9279. Again, 386-456-9279. And do you have a website? Uh, well, our university website is uksnow.org. Again, UKS, U is in United, K is in King, S is in Science, the word now, N-O-W, .org. Okay, Yvette, I would like to take some other callers that we have waiting. I would definitely suggest that you uh, speak to uh, Dr. Valentine in more detail about your specific um, discomfort. And I know also we haven't talked about this just yet, but it's interesting that she called with a diagnosis of womb cancer mm -hmm. because you have extensive research and practical experience working with women's reproductive health issues. You're the author of the book, The Wounded Womb, The Suppressed Truths Behind the Anatomy, Metaphysics, Politics, and Economics of Women's Diseases. And if you had something brief to add to that, um, that would well, be great. Well, I would like to do that too. Yes, my she, wife, and I, yes, I would love to meet that. My wife and I met because she had breast cancer and she was a week away from a mastectomy and now she's cancer free. I have helped people to heal themselves. I am not a healer. Anyone making a claim to that is uh, is actually riding an egotistical horse. There's no healers in human flesh. The only healer is the intelligence within the human body. And what I do is help people to find that self-healing intelligence and empower themselves to heal themselves. Because all healing is with you. No doctor can heal you. So uh, usually with people who have cancer, uh, cancer is not a fatal disease. That is a lie. It becomes fatal after they start their prodding and their pricking and their pulling and their tugging and what they call their biopsies. But I have seen people who have come to me over the years, especially elders who've had cancer, outlive their doctors. So this is another fear-mongering tactic of the doctors that they go in, they see things according to their own church's uh, catechisms and their own sacraments, and they tell you that you're in immediate danger if you don't cut, burn, or drug, and that is nonsense. Cancer is the final stages of the body 
cornering as well as isolating a disease condition that you did not give it a chance to get rid of. So if you leave it alone and reverse your activities and do the things you're supposed to do to bring yourself back to health, change your mind and change your habits, you can heal yourself, period. Okay. Let's continue with our callers. Um, David in Visalia, I think. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the information. I'd like to say thank you also to um, uh, Dr. Valentine for everything. And, and actually, I was calling to get the name on the on the book, and I, I got one here. Uh, did you guys mention more than one book? No, I could mention uh, my wife's book, Seven Steps to Healing and Wellness. That is an excellent book as well. Seven Steps to Healing and Wellness. Actually, it's a it's print on demand book. So all you have to do is go up to lulu dot com. That's l u l u dot com. And okay, put in. Excuse me. Okay, I, I got that. I have one question. I I, I want to be brief because I'm sure there's other callers, but um. Uh, Take your time, David. Take your time. Yeah, with with some of this information and some of the books, is there also uh, information in there about how to kind of bring this message and, and sort of deliver it to our families who might have sort of these misguided uh, senses of what it is that is available to us in terms of dealing with our illnesses and information like that? Wow, David, what a great question. That is the That's the question I've been trying to answer. All the time for the last 35 years. I've been okay, asking. that's the million-dollar question. Yes, it is. The $66,000 question. It, how do you convince someone uh, of, of, of a system and a process that they need at least time and effort, research, patience, in order for it to have any kind of effect? Mm. That's very difficult. And only time that people are ready to do that is after they've tried everything else. And usually the people who find us are just those people who have tried everything else. And then the problem begins. The real problem is now we have to help them reverse the damage done by all the drugs and all these other types of uh, therapies that they were first experimenting with. So if they came to us at the beginning when their bodies were strong and they still had vitality and their problem was just acute rather than chronic, then it would have been a faster reaction. The body would have been higher and more electrically charged and still had their health. And and, and it's very difficult to, to, to try to persuade someone who has been just completely battered by years of drugs and, and, and all types of potions and madness that they put into their body with no effect. In fact, I'm writing my second book right now. It's, it's dedicated to people who've been suffering like that. Would you okay. go back and just mention the title? of the books once again and how people can get them because I think we cut that short and maybe people wanted to hear that. So you were mentioning Dr. Nailani's book? Yes, Dr. Nailani's book is called Seven Steps to Healing and Wellness. A very wonderful book. It reads very quickly and it deals with healing through um, uh, what we call the administration or the aid of um, essential oils. And you just go up to Lulu, L-U-L-U dot com and just put in Seven Steps to Healing and Wellness or put her name in, N-A-L-A-N-I. And you can go up to the same site and just put in Wounded Womb and uh, the, the title page and the purchase page would come up. All right. Let's continue with callers. First, I'll give the phone number out once again. We've got some time here for more callers. In the East Bay, 848-442. Again, this is a pre recorded show. Please do not call in. This is a pre recorded show. Thank you. Justice in Berkeley, welcome to About Health and thank you for holding. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored to be on the show. Um, Dr. Valentine, I heard your story earlier when I was riding around, and as soon as you said uh, vaccinations, it really caught my uh, attention because I came across the work of a man named Dr. Horowitz, who yeah. did a lot of work on the similar similar things with vaccinations and things you can do to um, balance out what you've done in turn for taking those vaccinations. I just wanted to know if you had any link with him or have ever heard of his work or if you wanted to elaborate any more on vaccinations. Mm, well, no, I've, I've, I've heard of Dr. Horowitz's work and I'm, you know, I admire his work for what he has done. Um, I came upon his work when someone, I believe one of my, uh, one of my
my students uh, had told me that there were other people working out there on the same line. But uh, I, my work began around 35 years ago, and for the last 20 years, I have been, well, let's just say I've been the bane of the New York education system because lawfully and legally I had developed a vaccination exemption package where and uh, their, their parents did not have to take it by using their religious exemptions. And I have been teaching uh, ever since uh, around the country because of our church being a, a church at large. I have been, uh, you know, giving the vaccination exemption package, actually going to court three times in New York and winning three times on my va my vaccination <laughs> exemption package. So wow. I have, been, I have been the bane of the pharmaceuticals and the New York system, uh, education system. So, yes, if I, I, I've heard of Dr. Horowitz, and I admire his work, and I'm, I'm very happy. With, also, the, I mean, you have other people such as... Um, uh, 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 Sharon Kimmelman, who has been doing an exceptional job with her work uh, at the vaccine information line that she's had out of New York. So there are many people around the country that's doing this, and I'm I'm just happy to be uh, one in a slew and uh, a veritable army of people whose consciousness has been uh, helping other people to come to understand what's going on. Wow. Well, thank you very much. I I'll just leave with this quick comment and uh, what you said about healing yourself, because I, I totally resonate with that I, I heard a statement that beware of your thoughts because they become your words because beware of your words because they become your actions beware of your actions because they become your habits and beware of your habits because they steal your fate yes <laughs> very well no. put justin uh you, you could quote uh, a gentleman named uh, juan from san francisco he's on youtube a lot but i just like sharing the information and thank you very much Thank right. you. Thank you for the call, Justin. And I would just like to concur that we do have a choice when it comes to vaccinations. And furthermore, even when it comes to things like TB testing, I worked at a local hospital and as part of my employment there, they said it was absolutely required that I take a TB test. And I said, no, I haven't been around anyone diseased. I don't see the point. They called lawyers, long story short. In fact, I didn't have to do it. So I'm just adding that to say that don't go on automatic when it comes to your health. Um, question. It's not always so when someone says that, you know, you have to do something. I was the first person out of thousands of employees who said, no, I'm not taking a TB test. Again, it's each individual's choice. I think we're bringing this information to reiterate that you do have choices when it comes to your health and that you should be trusting your own intelligence and not going to a higher authority than, than yourself mm -hmm. when it comes exactly. to your health. Exactly. Let's continue on the phone lines. We have Judy from Sebastopol who's been holding. Judy, welcome to About Health, and thank you for holding. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, I picked up a, 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 I'm a health care worker, and I picked up a mite. That I, at first I thought it was a fungus, and I tried everything alternative, and then as last resort I went to the doctor's. To make a long story short, they gave me steroids, and it kind of took over. It's been a real battle, and there's no information about, uh, not much information about parasites, especially mites. And I don't know how to reinfect myself because I'm realizing that most elderly people do have it. And since I, I'm around them and I touch them, I'm, uh, I feel really vulnerable. Hmm. Well, I can tell you that the... If the mites have gotten or if they've migrated into the bloodstream uh, or if you've gotten any eggs or if, if the infectious or the place that they have done their infection, uh, what happens is th they can live pretty much off of any waste byproduct in your body, coming from your body or in your body. So uh, what has to happen is you have to... Uh, I don't know the nature of the mites that you have, so I can't give you a uh, proper uh, analysis of what it is that you're dealing with because I don't know what the circumstances are. But I will tell you that mites, being what they are, uh, they only su they only survive in putrefactive environments. So changing the nature and the pH of the blood has a lot to do with it. And sometimes if you add certain types of herbs or drugs, especially steroids, which definitely affect the kidneys, 
and the liver, causing you to put on weight and to swell up, which then is is actually help causing you to retain the waste. Um, then we have you, you have to change the nature of the blood. You have to uh, find the site uh, that uh, the quote unquote the, the site of infection or the site of entry. Uh, and uh, I can tell you some of the things that you could do, but I, I won't. Uh, I don't know what the nature of it. I don't know what type it is. I don't know what the natures there are. I don't know the environment. I don't know what you eat. I don't even know your habits. So I can't give you uh, any real honest answer on that. Can I write you on your website? Yes, you can write me on, uh, actually, if you wish to write me, you can write me directly at uh, Sunu, S-U-N-N-U. -N -N that's, that's my email, S as in Sam, U, N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, U, S-U-N-N-U, -N -N at Temple Healing. That's one word, templehealing.com. Sanu at templehealing.com. And, uh, you know, just put in the, uh, in the message bar, because I get so many, many emails, I'll just delete what I don't recognize. Just put down for Dr. Valentine, um, you know, and then I'll look at it and I'll see it. Put it in all capital letters. Uh, otherwise, I'll just delete most of what it is I get. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, thanks for the call, Judy. Let's give out the rest of your contact information again. Your website, UKS now.org hmm? org and your number at your office is area code 386 456 9279 correct and before i take any more callers i want you to briefly tell us about your university because it's very innovative and unique and before we you know keep going i think i think since we're giving this information out we should let people uh, know some ways that they can learn more Yes, thank you so much. It's called the University of Commission Sciences. We we teach the sciences, the uh, higher sciences of the ancient Chemites, or what they call the ancient Egyptians. Um, we uh, we tend to gloss over the fact that the ancient Chemites were uh, the foundation for all of what civilization represents today, and that includes the Greeks. Uh, they just seem to bypass our ancient African ancestry. And we teach the, um, the ancient Kemetic wisdom. And we have three uh, major courses that we teach. We teach the language of the ancient Kemites, which is what they call the hieroglyph. Uh, that language is, being, is taught by Dr. Nalani herself. Uh, we have a family package for that uh, course where we want our little children to learn the language so that they go to museums and are able to read the cartouches and all of the different uh, uh, so-called hieroglyphics, which are actually called the medunetra. And uh, the, it's, it's so wonderful when Nalani and I goes and she reads the medunetra. It's like reading what your ancestors left as a, a little note or a script to you thousands of years later. Uh, we also teach metapsychology what is called metaphysical psychology, and that is uh, the science of thought uh, and its connection to uh, life uh, and the universal mind itself, how it operates on all levels, all dimensions, and so forth, uh, the science behind thought and how it is uh, the purveyor and the organizer of life. And we also teach naturopathy uh, based in the hygienic sciences. So those are the three major. We're expanding a little later on when we get a little bit of, uh, you know, help from the, the family to put down our first cornerstone. Uh, but we, right now we are a cyber university, and we teach uh, live online in in real time uh, to people who are students around the world. We have them in uh, the United Kingdom, in Canada, in uh, Grenada, in uh, all over the United States, uh, in Japan. So uh, we have a cyber university, and we have a pretty good reach around the, uh, around the global family. Okay. Let's try and get in a few more callers. And, again, if you want more information about the books or the university, the website is UKS now.org or you can uh, reach the office at area code 386-456-9279. You're listening to About Health on KPFA. I'm your hostess today, Rachel Bryant, and our guest, Dr. Phil Valentine, who's a metaphysician, a scholar, a teacher, and many more things. So Let's continue with the phone lines. Jonathan in Oakland, uh, thank you for holding and welcome to About Health. 
Oh, thanks very much. I'm really enjoying the show. Thank you. And yes, and I really uh, um, am glad to hear this approach that puts the responsibility um, back in our our own our own uh, beings and bodies. And my question is. Um, my mother has a kind of arthritis that seems to be destroying her joints and her hands and her at her feet and causes a lot of pain. Is there anything general to be done about that? I mean, she's mostly a vegetarian, and uh, I, I mean, it, it would seem like her diet is, is is not too extreme. Although, you know, who knows? But and also, um, the the idea about um, viruses and epidemics and and how. The way uh, Dr. Valentine looks at it would explain um, uh, this I, uh, this purported fact that nine out of ten of the Native Americans um, died within five to ten years of initial contact with the uh, Europeans. Um, so that's my two questions. Well, I can tell you that. Um, your 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 mother uh, most likely has a very highly acidic intake, and if she were to you know slowly begin to to reincorporate more alkaline foods, especially water, alkalinized water, um, I'm not going to give any kind of um, solutions. But what I do, what I used to give to my mother is an old-fashioned remedy. It was Knox gelatin. It's not very you know what do you call PC, but for immediate relief, you can go right to any store, and I used to just go to the store and give her a couple of uh, teaspoonfuls uh, every morning of the Knox gelatin, and uh, it, it helped. To, um, that, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Was that it, the OKNOX? Yeah, the OKNOX, the old Knox gelatin. Oh. You know, it's not, it's not vegetarian. But if she's really suffering, and, uh, you know, before she really starts to get her body together, really she needs to get her body together, it's to, I mean, to stop the suffering for a moment. I'm not giving anything. This is, I'm just telling you what I gave to my mother. I'm not telling you to give it to your mother. That's mm -hmm. for you to choose to do that. Sure. Uh, the other thing about the, uh, the Native Americans, that's an interesting story. Uh, the Native Americans actually began to... Uh, suffer disease or become uh, predisposed to your diseases because after they were driven off of their homelands where they hunted and grew their own food, they were given food or they were forced to be uh, um, forced onto lands where they were put under uh, U.S. regulations and laws and the food that they ate there essentially began to change their nature of their blood. In fact, after two generations under uh, the Europeans um, uh, AIM the American Indian uh, movement system <clears throat> when they began to put up these outposts and reservations two generations later the whole uh, all the natives who were actually under that system actually two generations later were lighter than their grandparents in fact their grandparents were essentially maybe a shade lighter if uh, a shade lighter than uh, than the darkest African man. And the, the pictures, the ancient pictures they had of the natives show the degenerative process from using the uh, denatured foods that they gave them. So after predisposing the Native Americans to the diseases by giving them denatured foods and, of course, not to mention the stress that was created, and stress, of course, diminishes our ability to defend ourselves from disease, then with the, the so-called um, uh, blankets, which essentially did not actually cause that because you can't actually cause a disease by giving someone a disease, uh, a disease is actually the body creating the conditions to get rid of whatever it is that's in there. So if anything mitigated uh, smallpox and people were living in insufferable conditions, of course it would diminish them and uh, cause them to be wiped out. But uh, the smallpox does not kill. No disease kills. That disease is essentially a body-generated mechanism to save the body. It only kills after it's been interfered with by Western thought, Western medicine, Western histrionics, all of those things. That's what kills you. But diseases don't kill. Disease is generated by the body's intelligence for the express purpose of getting rid of the problem that caused the body to need the disease condition. Once that happens, the body returns back to its normal state of homeostasis after it has done its job. 
but it is not usually left to do its job. You see, by the time you have a condition at the surface, by the time your nose starts running, by the time you have a fever, by the time you have chills, by the time you have upset stomachs and a headache, your body was two weeks getting rid of the problem to bring it to the surface. So what do doctors do as soon as the body brings the problem to the surface? They say you have a problem. And then they give you a drug to suppress the body's last efforts to get rid of the problem. So they just push the problem back into the system that the body was trying to get out of the system. So if you understood how the body worked, you would know that a lot of the things that they say were caused by a germ or bacteria is nonsense. Okay. You know, I think it's a good time to clarify because what you said to him earlier about uh, his mother's arthritis and the Knox gelatin was, I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm telling you what I did for my own mother. So I think it's a good time to clarify when I refer to you as Dr. Valentine, you are not a medical doctor, a Western medical doctor. And I'm looking at the cover of your book and I see all these letters and I could care less because I know you personally and know that it's based on experience, as you stated earlier in the show, that you practice on yourself for years and then began to work with the community around you. And for 30, 35 years, you've been doing this. But for the record, uh, please uh, clarify when I'm referring to you as doctor, um, what your well, I, I've gone to I've gone to two schools. Um, my school of my school, my first school where I received my doctorate or my PhD was the Life Science Institute of Texas, who was run by T. C. Fry. Uh, that folded over into what is now called. Um, the Fit for Life Institute, which is a very well-known institute out of Canada. And uh, my doctorate was with the Life Science Institute of Texas, and I do have a a diploma from the College of Natural Health, uh, Fit for Life Sciences Institute out of Canada. So I did my Ph.D. with uh, Dr. T.C. Fry uh, back in the days, way back in the days before he had passed away and before people said that he went crazy and he did all kinds of things. He was the one who actually wrote the book, The Great AIDS Hoax. And after that particular um, thing, that's when all of his troubles began. Well, maybe we'll have that conversation one day, the great AIDS hoax. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, let's try and squeeze in one more caller. I think we've got about three minutes, so let's go to Raquel in Napa. Raquel, thank you for holding, and uh, you'll be our last caller, I think. Quickly, what's your question? Thank you. I feel so lucky. Um, Please, I hope you can help me. I've been battling with skin fungus for over 30 years now. If I'm not constantly putting the cream on, it takes over. Is there anything that I can do diet-wise or otherwise? Yeah, it's not topical, beloved. It's internal. It's in the blood. Uh, it, whatever it is that you're doing can be reversed. Remember I said that whenever it shows on the skin, there are two other agencies at work, the large intestines and the uh, the lungs. Mm-hmm. So with a cleansing of the large intestines and a revitalization through certain products, uh, and we'll tell you about those products at another time, um, you can actually, it's a product actually that's not a vitamin. It's actually a food, and only the only thing that we actually would work with with you are food products. And you would, it would take a while, but it would be natural, and it would be in time with the body's own uh, um, energies. And we would not want to force any kind of healing upon you. So I know that you're suffering right now, but anything topical would actually exacerbate the problem because it will come back again with a vengeance. What is happening with you is internal. Basically, in the large intestines, uh, in the blood, and in the lungs. Hmm. Okay, I would like to go to your website, and perhaps you can give me a little bit more detail. If that's yeah, it's best to call us at the university's uh, number at the three eight six four five six nine two seven nine number. <laughs> KPFA listeners are invited to a benefit concert for Haiti, Spiritual Sounds for Haiti, Tanin's Sufi Music Ensemble, Rifat Sultana, Lure Hightower, and Khalil Shahid and the Morocan Project will provide an evening of Sufi music. Spiritual Sounds for Haiti takes place on Saturday, March 27th, 
from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. at Islamic Cultural Center at 1433 Madison Street in Oakland near Lake Merritt. Suggested donations are $10. This event benefits Islamic Relief USA and proceeds go to relief for Haiti earthquake victims. For more information, email us at info at iccnc.org.